I've waited like 12 years for someone to make IDW Ninja Turtles figures. Let's see if the wait was worth it. It's Morphin' Time. Special shout out to our channel members, including our Sound Squadron Captains, Infinity Wartorn, Don Don Ranger Power, Jojo Star, Jamie's World, Tom Man 256 Productions, Infinite 1985, Scrub Lord Gaming, Toku Texas Cosplay, Aiden Reynosa, Christian Alejandro Saltos Valencia, Smith the Crow, Kyle, MJ Klein, Oma Ender Prime, Spin Dash 54, Psycho O's, Dr. Grid, Super Shaddix Boom, Rabbit Man, The Nerd Channel, and Primary Almond. If you'd like to join as a channel member, there's special perks. Hit the join button down below to find more details. Hello, this is Sanite here, and welcome to another episode of Panels to Plastic, the series where I take a look at a line of action figures based on comic art and compare them to the comic art. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Loyal Subjects BXT AXN line of Ninja Turtles based on the IDW comics featuring Raph, Leo, Mikey, Donnie, and Shredder. These are the retail release versions. There were fancy versions of the Turtles with extra paint and stuff that were released for Comic-Con. I skipped out on those and I got the regulars. And there is a fancy version of Shredder that comes with a Shredder in Hell comic book, and I also did not get that version either. So let's take a look at these five figures and figure out if they are worthy of the IDW Ninja Turtles lineup and if they've been worth the wait that I've waited so long for. All right, so let's look at Leonardo first. Uh, this is the packaging style that uh, Loyal Subject has gone for with the IDW Turtles. A bit different than their, their other style, which was kind of more square. This has got more angles to it. What's really cool is we have unique artwork here on either side of Leo. My favorite part is the fact that it actually credits the artist, Mateus Santaluco. And it says up here straight from the pages of the TMNT IDW comics with custom artwork from Mateus Santaluco. TLS proudly presents Leonardo. And it's got, you know, kind of a rundown of accessories and that sort of thing. So I really do love the packaging artists being credited and the fact that these are based on the actual artwork from the comics, but they are unique artwork on either side, which gives them a really cool feel. So let's crack open Leo and see how he is. Okay, so here is Leo and we're going to put his bandana in. The bandana is very stiff. Like a lot of things on this figure, I would be uh, concerned about things breaking. So like, be careful. It's a uh, ball joint that's meant to articulate, but... Uh, you know, once it's in there, it's pretty in there. But yeah, these these feel really stiff. And in general, it's kind of how I feel about the figure. Uh, very stiff and weird. I, you know, I didn't totally love the Loyal Subjects Casey Jones I looked at in my Every Casey Jones video, because uh, I did that, like, opening it first time there. And yeah, I mean, this is kind of, it's very weird. Like, the head's really stiff. Uh, the shoulders here, like, they can't really move out. They're supposed to, I think. But they keep rotating forward instead of, like, actually moving. Like, I can tell there's a cut in there. I just don't know how deep it is. The, uh, the biceps are fine. The elbows are ugly. Uh, this is just too too much of a straight cut on the elbows. Uh, common easy action figure mistake. Uh, the hips the hips are pretty good. They move you know out forward back thigh swivel. The knees bend once again not the nicest looking knee in the world. Uh, it's a little bit better than you know the way that the Casey Jones looked. Uh, it's got ankle pivots, but for some reason they feel weird. Like they don't pivot forward and back at all. They just pivot left and right, but then they're just kind of on weird axes. So it's okay. Uh, the wrists swivel and the wrists are supposed to pivot, I think. There's a joint. They don't really feel like moving. Uh, and in general, like the swords back here, these, uh, the sheaths are just incredibly, they don't come out. It's incredibly stiff like incredibly stiff plastic. The swords themselves, they have a little bit of give to them, but they are pretty sturdy. Uh, it's just something to be concerned about. In general, you're trying to get the uh, the swords in. That just looks weird, from a uh, even for a Ninja Turtle hand. I haven't been able to get these swords in. Like, I think you have to use some heat application and everything to get them really to, like, stay in the hands properly, or at least in this set of hands. And they're also painted handles, which I would be worried about paint rub. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of, like, the best I can do. So the thing is is we're going to compare it to the comic art because I think that's where these strengths lie. Uh, as a figure, I'm not that impressed. Also, uh, I'm not impressed with the stiffness on a figure that says 8 plus. Like, yeah, it's not 4 plus. It is for like, you know, they do rate it for older kids. But I would be concerned about, you know, these are kind of pointy. Uh, and I would be also concerned about the stiffness of, like, a kid breaking this. Because, like, these hands, you know, we're, we're talking, like, these are supposed to hold things, but yet there is, like, no flex in those fingers. So you have to heat it up with a hairdryer or something, really, to get it to work. But he does come with other accessories, and, and then we should cover all of that. So first things first, he comes with an alternate head that is a neutral expression, which I like more. Uh, they kind of went with the uh, the pupils for the neutral face, and then the no pupils for the, like, the... the 
the battle mode face. This is the same bandana. I kind of wish there was a relaxed bandana as well uh, in case you wanted to pose these guys in a more neutral position. Also getting the head off of the uh, the socket can be an adventure and we're trying it on camera just to test it once. Uh, a lot of what I say for Leo will apply to the other turtles. There we go. So you can see the head is just one giant ball socket. And so, you know, once you pop them on, uh, which can be tricky, we're just gonna take the bandana off. It's kind of, it is nice the bandanas come off to swap heads. You know, unlike some other, and there goes the head. Unlike some other companies, Turtles figures where it can be tricky to get around the bandanas without breaking them. I can't get that on, just just straight. And again, it's not so much a problem. It's like, you know, they're kind of collector figures, but they are they are saying eight plus. But yet, like, I don't think any eight-year-old was going to have fun trying to swap the heads on this figure. Because it just doesn't seem like the head's sized correctly. Which means it's got to be heated and then squeezed, but the plastic's so stiff. Uh, I kind of worry about that. It's kind of funny because I think, like, NECA's... A company that's really infamously stiff with figures and yet I feel like over the years they've actually softened stuff up and loyal so and oh, look I'm bleeding from from uh, from trying to use this NECA as a company is is one that's gotten better at like not using all stiff plastics on everything and it took them a few years but like now they use softer materials in places this I think outside of like maybe the knee and elbow joints, this feels like an entirely stiff figure and it doesn't make it fun to pose because I'm worried that like something's going to break constantly or there's things like I can't really swap the head and I, I popped a blood vessel there. So uh, I got to go bandage myself up because I've officially bled from trying to move this very stiff figure. Okay, so I had to use a hairdryer on Leo's head, but I got it on. Even now, it's just incredibly tight. Like, it's just so stiff. Uh, it does feel like that Loyal Subjects, while they have been doing Ninja Turtles figures for a couple years, haven't really nailed it yet. Uh, they still need to work on a lot of the, the stiffness, a lot of the tightness. And I'm glad I got these versions with less paint because the ones with the body spray, I imagine, have even more issues. Because this is just, it's hard to get these figures to do things besides just bend their elbows. Like, like I said, the shoulders, getting those to move, it's just really, really hard uh, to do anything. But he does come with a bunch of stuff. Stuff. So let's let's look at his other accessories besides the head. Okay, so each one of the swords gets these effects. Uh, it's not really like pulled from the the comics or anything, but just kind of a swoosh slash effect, not so much an energy effect. But you do get two of these. I think those look nice. I think it's kind of cool to just add to Leo's accessory count a bit by giving him cool like effect pieces. And then he comes with these two smaller versions of these two smaller swords, like dagger versions of his swords. And I flipped through my hardcovers. I went looking through the comic. I couldn't find an exact reference. There may be a reference to these somewhere in the books. I just couldn't find it while flipping through the issues that Mateus Santaluca worked on. So that's just kind of, you know, where it's at. But it's kind of a cool addition. So he also comes with extra hands. Here's some smaller grip hands, which I found, you know, considering they're supposed to be like smaller grip, they're not really like, they don't fit these handles. If you can notice, I can barely get them in the, uh, the come on, let's see. Can we get the swords in? Yeah, it kind of barely holds the swords correctly, which again, I just, the stiffness of these hands is too much. Uh, I guess they're supposed to hold these, but these have the same exact handle size, so, you know, same exact result. They kind of seem a little pointless. It seems like there's just too much hand, not enough grip, and I apologize for the bandage. I'm a little frustrated <laughs> trying to deal with these figures. He also does come with these open hands, which are good for uh, posing, which is nice, but the question is, like, how easy is it to swap the hands out? So, this is going to be first run test. Let's, oh, that was pretty easy. Okay. Hey, at least something on this figure works as intended. Can I go in yep there we go so you can have like kind of like that you could have him have him with one of the swords like ready to fight that kind of thing i don't know i feel like leo's the least likely to need open hands he's just a little bit awkward as a figure uh let me try to get him in a better pose here okay this is the best i can do with what we're given i do think these hands look awkward with the turtle hands you don't really have them like like this usually it's like like this where they're like you know they have a thumb and then two fingers. The the whole like thumb between the two fingers thing just looks a little weird, but the other hands literally can't hold the swords. You know, I like the neutral expression over over the, the screaming head one, but uh, my fingers hurt just from trying to pose them. He doesn't feel great. But let's look at, you know, some art here, art comparisons. First of all, here's the trading card he comes with. Really like that we got trading cards. I love that uh, four figures. He's got a, uh, you know, a little bio there, pretty, pretty generic, nothing specific to the IDW stuff, but you know, 
you can see the likeness there is pretty solid. And then he also comes with a sticker for the toy line. So uh, Leo himself, I think, as an action figure, is kind of rough. He looks like the packaging art that, you know, is meant to go with the figure. But how does he compare to artwork from the IDW comics themselves? So compared to the issue 33 cover, which I thought was a good reference point, you can see that proportionately it's kind of close. Uh, they do say they are based on uh, Santa Luco's art, but it's not quite there. Uh, you know, if we're going for accuracy, the leg wraps are too tall. He's got these arm gauntlet guard things going on. And, you know, the, the swords aren't positioned correctly. It, it's, it's reminiscent of it. Now, when we look at some interior art, we can see these are where the uh, the gauntlet things come from. There's no covers on the hands, so that's a little bit off. And proportionately, yeah, the heads are a little too small. The torsos are a little too large. They're not as lanky. Uh, these The actual figures feel more like, you know, inspired by the Santa Luca proportions on the turtles, more so than like a direct translation, which, you know, after having like the Mirage figures from NECA, this does feel like a bit of a step down, but it's a different company and a different approach. It's not 100% accurate. It's just inspired by, I mean, the bandana size too. It's, it's again, it's like, what if we took the unique distinctive style of this artwork, but then filter it through normal expectations for Ninja Turtles. And that's kind of what we have here. Okay, here's Leo with some other Leos. We got the NECA cartoon, the NECA Mirage Jim Lawson, four pack the super seven ultimates and the NECA secret of the ooze uh, so you can see that scale wise he's a lot smaller this is uh the loyal subjects lines are five inch figures so they are a bit smaller like NECA stuff and super sevens are like seven inch scale this is five inch scale but i mean it's not that far off from like you know the other collector's lines at the moment and so, you know especially like the cartoon ones being a little smaller uh, but that's just kind of like where we're at scale-wise with this line, and specifically with Leo. And then here is Leo next to the 80s Casey Jones uh, from Loyal Subjects, the only other Loyal Subjects figure I own besides the IDW Turtles. Uh, the problem with these, I remember, is that they are all the same size, regardless of the character. So, you know, I guess this is about the same size as the 80s Leo Ninja Turtle figure, but that is the 80s Casey Jones, just as a uh, Loyal Subjects comparison, because that's the only other one I have. So this Leo isn't amazing, but let's see if his Turtle Brothers fared any better. Okay, here is Raphael. Uh, once again, some really nice, unique artwork on either side of the box, and then a little bio on the back that's, you know, pretty generic stuff back here. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him, because he does look like he's a different mold from Leo, which is something I like to see in Ninja Turtles. Okay, so here's Raph. I took the uh, liberty of just kind of putting him in basic state. Uh, the head is once again really stiff, uh, not easy to swap. I just had zero luck, so I'm just not gonna bother. Uh, you got the uh, bandana separate piece, once again, a little ball jointed. The shoulders on Raph actually work on mine. Like, I think this is how Leo's are supposed to go because it's designed the same, but it does actually move out. You know, they got that, you got double jointed elbow, you got wrists, you got hips, you got double jointed knees. That is one of the ugliest looking knees in a while. But anyways, you know, ankles that pivot left and right. It's kind of standard stuff. Uh, the size are stored on the back, which is inaccurate, but you know, we'll look at that in a moment. And the size themselves are kind of like Leo's swords. They feel a little fragile. Uh, they're very pointy. Again, I'm not really sure how these are passing eight plus when it's pointy enough that I'm pretty sure if I could, I could puncture skin with that. Uh, the top tip, no. The side ones, absolutely. And yeah, it's that's just how they look. These are the standard grip hands that he comes with. And once again, just so incredibly stiff. Like, how are you actually supposed to work your way into the hand at all? There's no, there's no give whatsoever. So I think let's swap to some alternate hands. Okay, so he's got, you know, open hands like this. Uh, that's that's kind of neat. Yeah, he's got he's got these two open hands, which look very strange, but that's how those work. Then of course he has the the side gripping hands. You know the way that Raph holds the size all wrong and stuff. Uh, this uh, also doesn't work for the similar reason why the smaller grip hands on Leo didn't work. There's just not enough clearance. I don't. You know this is uh, this is action figure 101 that I feel like they're failing at is that even if I heat this all up to get this thumb moved enough, there's just that hole for where these have to go is an exact fit, which means there's not enough clearance to actually get it in and around and actually squeeze into place. So I'm kind of finding that like the alternate, the, the main hands are useless, but the alternate hands are kind of useless too. Unless you want to spend a lot of time with, you know, a hairdryer, a heat gun or something, trying to get this soft enough to uh, to squeeze the weapons in place. Because, like, if you're just trying to do it out of the box like this, you know, kind of the way a toy is designed to be, you know, played with, it's just not going to happen. Same thing with the, uh, the other one. It's uh, a little bit molded slightly different, but it's the same exact problem of it's just there's no clearance to work its way in and there's no, there's no 
there's no lack of friction at any point. I think the thumbs are too long, so like you can't just put it in and push it down. And again, it's just all so stiff and it's gonna just rub the paint right off because that's all it says. So I currently, as the moment, I can't figure out how to get these into his hands. Can I get them in reverse grip? Uh, maybe the reverse grip. There we go. Something. All right. One size in. His bandana fell off. Can we get the other side in? Into a hand at least. Like th There we go. That's, that's the way the sides are going in. Uh, no other way at the moment. Again, without just doing a bunch of modding stuff. He comes with these two tonfos. I flipped through all of the issues uh, that that Santa Luco did. Don't come from the Santa Luco era. Uh, they could come from something else. There was like a hundred, uh, there's almost 200 plus issues of this comic. So it's like, I'm not going to go through all of it or I may find it. Same thing with this. This is a uh, Ninja Star band. It goes over his head. It's actually packed on him in the, uh, the packaging. So you can see he's got three Ninja Stars. Flip through all the Santa Luca stuff. Couldn't find it. Flip through some of the other issues. Could not find an exact reference. Maybe he used it at some point. The Ninja Stars are removable. There's three of them and they each have four incredibly sharp points to them. So yeah, I don't know. It's just a lot of these figures feel like they're supposed to be constructed like art house toys where you have to be careful with them and you gotta be, oh, you gotta get your heat guns out and pose them and stuff. And you gotta get like, oh, you got, you know, pointy accessories and sharp details and really stiff plastic. Like art house toys are fun, right? I like that. Art house toys don't put eight plus on the box. Uh, I think Loyal Subjects needs to figure out what lane they're in because the only soft things on these is the belts and the, the turtle shell pieces. And that's kind of leading to a lot of the, I can't even get them to stand. Leading to a lot of problems I have with these. They, they, they are like art house toys without the actual quality of art house toys. And so they just become a little bit frustrating. And before I forget, he does come with an alternate head. I mentioned we couldn't swap the head. I didn't actually show the head. It's uh kind of a grumpy looking raff and he's got like a bit of a side he's got a he's got a lazy eye going on yeah the eyes aren't quite painted correctly so it's like one eye is just kind of drifting off to the side but that's that's the alternate head he does come with a trading card really nice artwork on that trading card i do notice that the artwork on the trading cards matches the figures a little bit better um this one matches you know exactly to the design of the figure which is nice unlike the leo which had a little bit of discrepancy but of course we got to compare him to his comic book art okay so i found a good shot here it's a full body shot of raff uh, first things first, like I mentioned, they holster the sides in the back. They're supposed to holster into the sides. Like, they actually sculpted the side holsters right there, but you can't use them. Uh, that's a slight action figure thing. That's a slight... Man, it's like you even sculpted it in. You just can't let us use them. Uh, kind of a bummer. The sides are a little too big. They are really gigantic uh, compared to the artwork. I think overall, proportion-wise, he's a lot closer than Leo, but he's he's a little too tall. He's not as stocky because, uh, you know, Raph is the not lanky one in this group, and he doesn't have the little hand bracers on the hands, uh, at least for this point in time. Okay, so here he is with the NECA Toon, the Super 7 Ultimate, the NECA Mirage Jim Lawson, and the NECA Secret of the Ooze. So again, he's going to be scaling a little bit shorter than the rest of them. Uh, the funniest part is that at this wide shot, it makes his head look so tiny. Like he's got uh, 2012 slash proportions going on. But anyways, there he is uh, next to the other modern rafts. And here he is next to Leo, where you can see how they are different molds, but I like that they're still the same height. Like, Raph is stockier, bulkier, bigger, but he's the same height as Leo. Because as you can see here, ignoring the fact that Donnie is in Metalhead's body at the moment, they are all about the same height, turtle-wise. So these should be about the same height, even if the proportion is a little different than what this is. I'm glad they kept the scale. So here's Donatello. We got some nice artwork of him on this side and artwork on him on this side. And uh, yeah, the packaging is pretty much the same as what we expect. Okay, so far Donnie is the best of these. Uh, here's his alternate head, which has a smile and he looks like he's got eyes like rolling on the back of his head. But I like that better than this angry snarl that doesn't seem to fit Donnie very well. Uh, the bandanas also uh, actually articulate. They're not super stiff. They just pop right in super easy, nice and quick. Really like that. Uh, shoulders move. Uh, they don't move as much as rafts, so I'm, I'm not sure if that's a tolerance thing, but there you go. Double jointed elbow. Doesn't look the best, but you know, it's there. Double jointed knee thigh swivel hips you know same articulation uh the ankles actually tilt properly which is nice and then the really good part is this bow staff here which pops out the back uh the bow staff actually can be held uh like pretty easily you just do it like normal um donatello bow staff stuff um it just fits in his hand you know you always have it's always tricky with donnie figures to get the bow staff in but yeah look at that he actually hold it like no problem and he can pose correctly uh this shouldn't be an accomplishment but it is i feel like this one actually feels like a ninja turtles figure that's marked as eight plus which is nice uh he also comes with these cool uh goggles i couldn't find the exact uh comic page for these uh you put them on him he looks really nice uh you can pop the bandana back on afterward which is pretty cool you know i'm probably gonna leave those on him 
just to just to take away the creepy eye factor uh the other cool part is he does come with this uh piece here which is reminiscent of the old mirage comics uh issue uh the donatello one shot and this actually did appear in the idw books and i'll have a specific comic panel reference for this and so you get like a fist that's supposed to go over so you can hold it uh properly which is good he's got like a finger pointing hand for science and then he's got these two open hands, which look, again, a little chunky, but at least he's got two of them. And then on top of that, he's got a, a trading card with the nice artwork on it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, honestly, like Donatello turned out the best out of all of these so far. Uh, just he feels like a working figure and I, I don't have too many critiques outside of like maybe the weird heads. Uh, other than that, he's pretty solid. So now it comes to comic accuracy, a little bit lacking design-wise. He's got these uh, elbow and knee wraps, which uh, Santa Luco didn't really draw him with in the book as much. But you can see April here holding this gauntlet. This gauntlet's not a one-to-one -one of this. It looks more Mirage-inspired in a lot of ways. But the gauntlet is something from the books, which, unlike some of the other accessories, I can easily source as like, hey, that did exist here. Now, if you don't want spoilers for, like, issues 44 through, like, onward uh just skip the next few seconds i'll put a timestamp up where you can skip to i just want to talk about this okay so in the comics uh donnie was attacked by bebop and rocksteady and he was quote unquote killed because they smashed his shell with a sledgehammer and that's why he was in the body of metalhead uh, which i showed in a previous uh comparison so what's interesting is that this donatello is a later donatello because for the most part with santa luco's run he did a lot of the era where donnie was dead and was in metalhead's body so there's not as much uh reference art for this and i just i could not spend the hours looking through to find the exact reference for his metal shell but essentially donnie did have his shell replaced i thought it was a partial but i might be mixing that up with one of the universal monsters figures that has like shell uh, replacement parts but they did put the uh the actual metal shell with the rivets and everything in here which is nice because it's starting to make me realize that yeah these are marketed as being inspired by uh mateus uh, santa luco's artwork but they are kind of amalgams of the idw turtles as a whole hence some of the design element changes and Donnie I think exemplifies this by having the metal looking shell which is nicely painted too it actually looks metal and so I like seeing that uh, kind of in an overall sense but again I think it's a bit of a marketing thing where it's like packaging art by Mateus Santaluco but less you know inspired by his art directly from the comic all right so here's Donatello with NECA Toon Donatello Super 7 Ultimates Mirage, Jim Lawson, and NECA, Secret of the Ooze. So you can kind of see all of them together. He actually stands a little bit taller than Raph and Leo, so they actually looks like he fits in this scale almost, but there's your comparison. And here you can see Donnie stands a little bit taller than Raph and Leo, but they are all about the same height, just different proportions, uh, just overall, which I think is great. And yeah, I think this is supposed to be a bit later of a Donatello design-wise, and so, you know, it kind of fits the height scaling, but they look good together. All right, so here's Michelangelo, the last of the turtles. Really nice packaging art, but that goes without saying. It just looks great. Now open up the figure. Okay, so here's Mikey. Uh, Mikey's not as good as Donnie. Uh, he's got the same kind of problem Donnie has, where he's got like this really angry head and then this kind of goofy looking head where he's like winking and smiling, and I, I don't like it. I don't really like either of them. Uh, he does have a shorter bandana than the others, which I think is very appropriate uh, for the character, even though uh, the artwork does show it a little bit longer. Uh, the other interesting part is he has useless holsters. Um, first of all, the belt moves on his. These holsters are here. They're slotted. I don't know what's supposed to go in them because, as you can see, the nunchucks fit back here. But if you pull these out, which is, you know, they're really tight in there, but they, they hold there. They don't fit there. And neither do these uh, comma weapons fit. Like, I don't know what those are for then. There's nothing else to put in there. But, hey, it's one of those cases, though, where he should store them here, I think. But they stores them back here. But at least it looks better than the RAF one. Uh, the nunchucks, he does come with the standard, you know, nunchucks with the brown stick hands. And yeah, they're just not going to go in those, are they? They're just not going to fit because the, the hands are too tight yet again. <sighs> Yeah, I think that's one of my biggest problems is these hands, they aren't sculpted, they're sculpted a little, there we go, got one in. They're sculpted a little too specific uh, to the size, so it's just kind of a pain to deal with. Um, he comes with these two, uh, set this, uh, two, two comma, uh, I don't know what they're exactly from in the comic, he probably used them at some point, I can't find the reference point, they also don't fit because they're too big. Uh, he does come with alternate hands, he's got a pointing hand, he's got open hand, he's got open hand and he's got fist so let's just swap him over to an open hand because i can't get the other nunchuck in for now i think these are the uh, problem with these figures they're just a little frustrating because i i want to love them i love the idw comics so much and they just aren't feeling like they're they're not really satisfying to me 
um, as figures, but there we go. There's that. Let's look at some comic art. Okay, here's a good shot of Mikey. Uh, this is the thing I didn't mention with the Raph as much, but this like angled in mask thing they did for Mikey and Raph doesn't really match the comics. They all had kind of like straight bandanas. Um, and the, uh, you know, the nunchucks, they look about, you know, nunchucky. They're not 100%. Design wise as well, you know, in this era at least, he had these arm guards as opposed to the wraps. And then the pockets in the front, I think, are supposed to be where his nunchucks go, but they just left them open here. So at least they're open, unlike Raph. But the other thing I have a problem with is the color. Color is just completely off. Uh, color's off on pretty much all of them, but this one just seems like a really weird shade of green overall. So once again, the NECA Toon Michelangelo, the Super 7 Ultimates, the NECA Mirage Jim Lawson, and the NECA Secret of the Ooze Michelangelo. So there you go. There's all the Mikeys together. So while they look a little strange and they don't exactly match the artwork they're supposed to be based on, these look decent together. Mikey's color just stands out though. What the heck? Raph, Leo, and Donnie are about the same shade of green. And then there's Mikey. Like, you know, I like it when the turtles are all different shades of color, but like Mikey just stands out from the rest of them and I don't know why the heck that is uh, and then adding to that the, the packaging says right here straight from the pages of the IDW comics with custom artwork like these are not straight from anything I can't find exact references for this set to the way they look, the way they proportion any of this, whether it's based on Santa Luco's art or not. I just, these don't match anything from the comics. They're, they're all amalgamations of different like iterations throughout the books. And that's fine, but it's kind of false advertising when they say like straight from the pages, like it should be inspired by. Uh, and just in general, the figures themselves, I think Adani's pretty good. I think the rest of them are, are having massive flaws, including not being able to hold their accessories and like properly. <laughs> Like, I got it to work, but not great. I'm not super jazzed. Uh, you know, I really love the IDW books, and I really wanted figures of the IDW Turtles, and uh, this, just didn't, this just didn't live up to the hype. But we still have one more figure to go. Let's take a look at Shredder. Okay, so here's Shredder. He's in a slightly different sized box. Uh, he's not as thick as the turtle boxes, but he's a little bit wider and taller. Uh, that's just nice to see, I guess. Uh, this is the IDW Shredder. You know, here's the artwork on the side. Here's the other artwork. This reminds me, I don't know if this is New York, it probably is, but it reminds me a lot of some of the stuff I've already seen. Um, but there we go. Uh, you know, same kind of thing. This is different. This is different up here. It says straight from the page of the IDW Comics, sculpts inspired by Mateus Santaluco art. Or Mateus, yes. Actually, sculpts inspired by not even the art of uh, where this is custom artwork from Mateo Santaluco. This says sculpts inspired by. So I think they've they've tweaked you know their phrasing. So you know there's that. So this this artwork is pre-existing. Then it doesn't say custom. So I'm assuming it already existed. Um, so let's take a look at Shredder. Okay, here's Shredder. Uh, he's different uh, than the turtles. That's good. He is just as stiff though. I. Hmm. I'm not super digging this. Uh, first of all, the cape is uh, plastic. Makes sense. You know, just kind of drifts around there. It's around the collar. Collar is a separate piece. So if you wanted to pop the head, if, ow, if you can, these are super spiky up here. You, ow, uh, you probably could swap the, take the collar off if you want like the, the more stripped down look. Mine has a QC problem where the, uh, the bicep joint isn't fully attached. I'll fix it later, but it's just a thing to note. note. Uh, shoulders move out 360. You know, usual kind of a little bit in and out, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, wrists, uh, the wrist pivot. The nice part is these are soft plastic. Thank goodness uh, I was worried about these being super spiky after touching the other uh, figures. The spikes on his arms and his shoulders are not as bad, but the helmet, yeah, they're, they're sharp enough like thorns on a bush. Uh, the upper torso has a swivel for some reason and then there's no waist joint and there's just nothing else in the torso i get it with the turtles because shells but that's just a solid chunk and this this doesn't do anything uh hips barely can move out move forward a little bit uh, when i moved this hip forward earlier it, it popped right off yep there it goes uh right off he has kind of a soft uh bottom piece like kind of like to cover the joint i guess but thigh swivel double jointed knee that doesn't go very far and then an ankle that moves forward and back and left and right, but it's it starts all the way over here. It's like it's off center to begin with. So uh, yeah, he's uh, he's very awkward, and I, I'm I'm a little let down. Speaking of being let down, let's see if the sword can go in his hand. It's a nice looking sword. Uh, let's see, can it fit? Can we squeeze it? Yeah, there we go. Cool, he can hold his sword. Uh, that's 
surprisingly an accomplishment. This thing's a little sturdier than Leo's. Uh, it's got a little bit of give to it. The hands feel a little bit better. He also comes with these two things, and uh, I'm just going to tell you now they're not going to fit. Those are way too thick for the hands that they've carved out here. Um, yeah, let's just let's just skip. Oh, ouch. These are also super sharp. What the heck is up with these figures? They're like for eight plus, but I'm like, I'm, I'm stabbing myself just doing a video on them. Uh, we've got, you know, open hands here, which look pretty cool, like he's grabbing for something. And then kind of like, you know, he's got like a pointing hand and a, and a half grip hand. I think we should swap this hand over to the kind of open reaching hand. And uh, yeah, you know, one of my problems with a lot of uh, Ninja Turtles lines for the collectors is that Shredder ends up being one of the worst figures when he should be one of the best. This is absolutely not changing that. Let's, let's see if I can pose him kind of neat. Yeah, he looks good except for the fact he has zero torso movement. So uh, I don't, hmm... Boy, this video's bumming me out at this point. Uh, this, this ain't it, Chief. This ain't it. He does come with an alternate Orokusaki head, which is very rare, uh, but he does have this unmasked head. He's screaming. It's very intense. He's got the scar. This looks pretty good. And of course, he comes with the trading card, which I do recognize this art from the comics. It's from a cover for some interior. Um, and yeah, you see this pose in the back where he's just standing stock. It's the best he can do. So design-wise, this is pretty spot on to the design from the comic. You know, he's got their arm wrapping above the armor. He's got the shoulder armor, the uh, boots and everything. The color's off. Uh, it's definitely more of a black gray than a blue. Uh, that may have shifted over different art styles, but again, I'm going back to Santo Luco specifically. Uh, this is a little light. Now, the Shredder and Hell variant of the figure is like darker blues and reds, so it's not like this either as far as I know. Probably flashing up a picture there to confirm or deny my memory. And since the variant of the figure is based on Shredder and Hell, I did want to make a mold comparison, and it's it's pretty close. I think sculpt-wise, out of all of the figures, the Shredder is 100% more accurate to the comics than the Turtles. And I think, you know, outside of some minor quibbles, I really do think they did a great job sculpting the Shredder, even if the color's a little bit off. So here's a Shredder comparison. We've got the NECA Tune, the NECA Mirage, Battle Damage, and then the Super 7 Ultimate original release. Yeah, I mean, scale-wise, it's actually kind of funny. He's really close in size to, uh, to the other Shredders here, though he is a little bit smaller uh, just because of the scale differences. But it's kind of interesting to see how each one of them takes a bit a different approach to the design. And because he has completely different mold than the Turtles, here he is next to the Casey Jones from Loyal Subjects. And you can see they've actually increased, like, the size. Like, instead of having everybody about the same size, you know, Shredder is bigger, and I think that's much better looking. One last little note on Shredder. There was a promo image of him holding this accessory that was, like, all the turtle bandanas gripped in his hand. That, unfortunately, just wasn't included. Uh, I don't think they update the listing. It was on some websites being included, and I don't think it's included with the Shredder in hell version either so i guess that accessory just got dropped but the product solicitations show it it's not on the actual figure okay so as you can see shredder is much taller than the turtles uh let's just get him like a, a standing right next to one of them there he is next to donnie you can see he's bigger i like it i like the scaling it does feel you know close it's not perfect but it's close that's kind of how i would describe this whole line these figures are frustrating uh they're close to being really great i think sculpt wise they're good you know i can sit here and talk about comic accuracy and stuff that's one thing but as amalgams of the idw turtles and then the spot on design of shredder sculpt wise are terrific articulation wise major problems uh there's things like leo's shoulders not working which could be QC, since the others work. Things like the ankles being designed weird, so they're not exactly stable. Things like the proportions being a little off. And then just in general, I just, I don't like the way the hands are done. Yes, I can heat them up with a hairdryer to make them work. The fact I had to heat up, you know, to get the heads on Leo and Donnie, I had to go heat them up off camera. Uh, that's not how toys sh should work. Uh, if they're in a collector's grade, then it's kind of expected because of the way that there's more parts and pieces. But these aren't collector's grade. These are listed as eight plus, and you have really sharp points, really fragile feeling pieces like the back of Leo. Like if he falls, that may snap off. You know, Shredder's got some points on them that made me, you know, I, I did bleed in this video. They're rated at eight plus, but they should be rated at like a 12 plus or a 14 plus. But with this line in particular, these feel stiffer and harder to play with than the NECA figures out of the box. And that's crazy because NECA has a reputation for making fragile figures, and I've had issues myself. So as IDW Ninja Turtles figures, I mean, I've wanted IDW Ninja Turtles figures for like 12 years, and I 
I'm kind of let down. And maybe for other people, these aren't as bad to them because they may not have wanted them as long. But I've been reading the IDW Ninja Turtles since issue one, and I've been reading it monthly since issue one, and it's about to hit issue 150. I really wanted some nice figures based on the IDW comics, and these just weren't it. I want more figures. There's listings for more, like the next wave is supposedly going to have like some of the new characters introduced in IDW, like Jenica. You know, I hope they're better figures than this, because this, you know, at the 23 bucks that they, they usually go for, 20 to $23. They're not horrible, but I'm not exactly rushing to buy more of them. So we'll see what time tells, but if you want to keep up with the line in any way, subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, and like the video if you want to see me cover those future figures, because I, if this video does really well, I'll feel more inclined to get those other figures earlier to review them. If you want to leave a comment down below, tell me what you think of these. You know, am I being a little harsh? But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Check out our Discord in the link below uh, to come chat about toys and stuff. I'm on there pretty frequently. I'm pretty active, so so come hang out and join our Monday live streams, Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern here on this YouTube channel. You can also join as a channel member on the channel for as little as $1 a month. At the $3 a month tier, you get early access, and that is early access to videos like this. So hope you will check that out. You can also find me on social media if you wish at SoundOut12. You can find my Oscar Graphic Designer on social media and on Discord at DarkClassics43. You can find Hero Club at HeroClub.com for comic news, interviews, and reviews. And until next time, this is SoundOut saying goodbye.